Good afternoon, everyone. I, Sneha, on behalf of NEN and Vadhwani Foundation, would like to invite you all for this webinar and also introduce our expert, Mr. Praveen Shekhar. He is a startup specialist in relationships, key initiatives, and business. He is honored with the Market Research Emerging Leader Award by the American Marketing Asso Association. He launched CREA, an India-centric panel research firm focusing on healthcare and youth founded Dexterity Business Analysts, Dexterity KPO Services, The Social Catalyst, a social marketing organization, and many more. He has presented technical papers at several international conferences and is a charter member of Chennai Speakers Toastmasters Club. His interests include entrepreneurship, marketing research, international marketing, social work, public speaking, travel, photography, and golf. Before I hand over the floor to Praveen, a quick note to all our attendees. You will all be on mute. You may ask questions by typing in the panel provided. Over to you, Praveen. Lovely. Good afternoon, folks. I'm Praveen. I'm a startup specialist, and it's my pleasure uh, to come ahead and talk to you about these three words. Take the plunge. That is the topic of today, what you would need to do. Regardless of where you are in your entrepreneurship career, the fact that you are there attending this webinar shows that you are either an entrepreneur or are a cat on the wall who is just about to take the chunk. That's exactly what I'm here to talk about. For all you folks who are active tweeters in the audience, my handle is at Praveen Shaker. Feel free to use hashtags MRX, SMR, Tai Chennai and NEN e Club. Now it's important for me to pause at this stage and give you an idea about what we're going to deal with today. I love three. From a marketing research term, I generally hate three because you're supposed to rate from one to five. And traditionally and culturally, Indians rate a three. We don't want to give too harsh a rating. We don't want to give too bad a rating. But from a conveying the message perspective, three is an absolute number. Because when you go away, you will remember three things. And the three things that I'm going to focus on predominantly are one, get the basics right, two, things that you need to know, and three is to jump. As an introduction, why you need to take the plunge? Well, let me quote a couple of examples. These are a couple of statements that state that this is from Kamal Riki, that if two percent of India gets converted into entrepreneurs, we can eradicate unemployment in the country. That is one. Second, my previous generation or the one before that saw a lot of freedom fighters. And this is something that TBS uh, Gopal Janevasan oft quotes, that entrepreneurs are the freedom fighters of this century. This is something that all of us need. And that's exactly what I'm going to talk about now. Power of fear again, you need to get the basics right, things that you need to know from either taking the jump or if you're already in, to raise the bar even higher. Now, let me get into basics. The basics again is split into three. One is internal, that is I, me, myself as an entrepreneur. Two is the immediate circle and three will be external. Now, when you talk about internal, who am I? Why should I do this? What do I get out of it? How can I do it? Can I do it at all? Uh, are all the questions that will come to your mind. Now, let me tell you folks. It is extremely important for you to sit around and address these questions because that is what will build the foundation. Let me give an allegory here. I'm pretty certain all of you watch movies. Now when you even consider about going to a movie, you need to realize that that belongs to a particular genre. It may be a commercial movie or an art movie. Or if that is a particular hero, he or she, in that case, I'm using the word gender, gender neutral, has an image. Oh, she is good in comedy, she is good in romance, um, this person is good in action. Now these are all images that are cultivated by these heroes. Take a step back. Who are you as an entrepreneur? At the initial stage, folks, you're all student entrepreneurs or pretty young entrepreneurs. I would want you to wear certain coats. Initially, I would recommend to get the basics right, just sit down. Throw the critical, analytical part of it out of the window. For a day or two, just sit and write down these things. What am I good at? What kind of hobbies do I have? Can a hobby become a career? 
uh, what exactly do I want to do in my entrepreneurial journey? And when you are in this, what I call the creative suit mode, please do not bring any negative thoughts or critical thoughts into play. It's extremely important for you to, what I call, create a white space approach. When you are in this initial creative suit phase, go right ahead and dream on. There's absolutely nothing that is not uh, going to, that's, there's absolutely nothing that's going to constrict the way you look at it. Now, let me give you an example. What, when I started this, and I started this, creative thinking process which I repeat quite often, uh, pretty late when it was passed on by a mentor. When you are in this creative phase, you have the freedom, the liberty to dream on, to pretty much figure out what is it that you want to do without bringing in any negative emotions or play or what do they think kind of a scenario. The advantage here folks, it's a full-fledged blank canvas for you to paint on. Now, once you've done this painting, remember it's a live painting, keep it on. Come back to it after a couple of days and put on your critique hat when you look at each of these and then, and only then you look at a judgment, you bring a judgment into play. Now, the reason I need the creative phase and then follow that by a critique phase, um, this is something I will repeat all through the talk today, it's just nothing ventured, nothing gained. There is this major thought that they will do it, they are the cause of the problem, who's they? As an entrepreneur, that word they is banned. It's us, what we can do, everything is in our own hands. Now, let me get back to the suit. You put on the creative suit, now you put on the critique suit and try to find holes in whatever you wrote about. Give it another couple of days, please write everything down. Don't try to do the entire exercise in your brain. Use blank sheets of paper, tape them to the wall, be open to look at it, please write it down. The third suit that I want you to do is put on the practical suit. Who knows you better than you as an entrepreneur? All of this is from an entrepreneur perspective. It's extremely important for you to put on the third suit, which is the practical suit. Now you've got a whole, um, all your dreams are on paper. One, two, you've also plucked a lot of holes from each of these, fine. When you put on the practical suit, you look at framing, reframing, categorizing each of these dreams and then finally prioritizing in terms of fine, these are the three or four areas that I would look at embarking on from an entrepreneurship career and that is a career, mind you, career where everything is in your hand. Now, having done that, you've got maybe one, two, three or four ideas that you have in mind, which is the first step from an internal perspective that you throw off, which leads us to one of the first major hurdles that we would need to cross, which is the fear of failure. What I necessarily talk in India, going from the ah moment to the aha moment. Now, let me give you an example. One of the main reasons for the fear of failure is in India what we call the four by four talk, which is four people talk in four different ways. And for those of you signing in from South India, that's really big out here. It's important for you to figure out, but let me give you one major piece of advice, self-doubt is good. If you're worried about if you get on stage and you've got butterflies in your stomach beforehand, it is good because these, when channeled properly, is going to propel you to do it further. Self-doubt is something that you have in your mind. From a fear of failure perspective, guys, fail, fail early, fail fast and repeat the whole action. At this point, your stakes are low, you can really jump in and try out each of those one, two, three, four stuff that you have written down in your creative suit, your dreams, what you want to proceed with. Get this fear. Now, let me give you an allegory here. How many of you have played Temple Run? I'm pretty certain most of you would have played Temple Run, Angry Birds. It's a game. And when we jump into this game, um, you're open for failure. The first couple of times you will fail, but you end up jumping in and playing it. The fear of failure will even prevent you to take that first jump. How many of you can even consider and listen, I, I don't want to play that video game because I might not understand and therefore I may not win. Complete bottle dash. Apply the same learnings from the video game to your entrepreneurship career. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you don't even want to try, what are you going to get out of it? So jump across from this fear of failure. Move from this, ah, what am I doing to this aha moment? And that's completely in your hand, guys. Oh, this is, this is my favorite in terms of what you need to be uh, doing as an entrepreneur perspective. And there's a footnote right there. 
lethargy, call it whatever you want, you want to propose to that girl, uh, but you never have the courage or you want to do it tomorrow or and you find out your, your friend walks away with that girl. Might sound funny, it's been a story oft repeated in several movies, but that's enemy number two as far as your startup career is concerned. A lovely saying, these days of course, you, whatever saying you like, you can attribute to anybody on Facebook, but just look at the message. Chase your dreams or someone will hire you to help chase theirs. Very, very effective and that's something that you will need to jump into. Ah, when you propose to your girlfriend, do you do it when the father is around versus the elder brother? Absolutely not. Timing is absolutely important from your business perspective, uh, especially if you're going to be a me too in your chosen path. I may not recommend it, but that's your dream. That's something you would need to follow. But from a timing perspective, that's something I follow. If you've already decided in your mind, any time is a good time. So if you're going to, if there are two options before you wait for the right time, wait indefinitely for, a, uh, for the right time, or to jump ahead and do your stuff, I would go with the latter. That's something that I would absolutely recommend folks because that is something um, completely in your control. You can blame the economy, you can blame the whole world, but if you don't do anything, you only have yourself to blame. Now, everything is, is absolutely not negative in my talk. These are things that every entrepreneur goes through and leave entrepreneurship. This is something everybody goes through at every point in our life. What is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is a state of mind. Once you've decided that, listen, come what may, this is something I'm going to do. You apply it to your business, you apply it to your life, you're going to come out a winner. Get out there, experiment with the market. Timing is important, but it's not the be all and end all. The next major thing, I just love talking about it, is we Indians, we would need to really develop a major thick skin. How many of you have failed in love? I would definitely encourage you to go because it's Apart from heartbreak, there's nothing else uh, breaking your bank account or your tax bracket account. However, jokes apart, that's something that will teach you how to handle rejection from a personal ego perspective. You will need to develop a thick skin uh, without getting too sentimental or emotional. Remember, if somebody is giving you feedback, they're rejecting, they're not rejecting you as an entrepreneur, they might be rejecting your idea or the particular timing. But be it a concept, a product, a service, yourself, you will need to gear yourself to face rejection day in, day out, at every corner of the day. In the initial part, you will realize, and it's not a myth, every entrepreneur goes through it, especially first generation entrepreneurs. You are the office pune, you are the office cleaning guy, uh, as well as the seat you're sitting in, until your team expands. But until your team expands and your brand comes through, even the peon who comes to your office uh, would be evaluating you. So it's very important for you uh, to handle rejection. Four words for you guys, get used to it. Get used to it with a smile on your lips because this is life, this is learning the hard way and that's absolutely something you need to learn to enjoy. Now, the basics, we covered the internal part. The next is the immediate circle, what I call the family, friends and other fools who are around us. And this is one word I'm going to let you go with all through and I'm going to repeat it, which is sell. You have to sell your idea, you have to sell your concept, you have to sell it across to each of these people because there will be questions on security, on salary, on peer pressure, your friend is doing that, why are you stuck with this kind of a job, it's going to take that much more. All these are thoughts. I wouldn't call them negative thoughts, they are concerns. Uh, they are concerned about you, these are concerns that they are raising, but it is up to you to win them over, which is why I have put them in basics. Whatever you do, they have not, my grandmom didn't speak to me for at least three to four months um, when I started the first business. That's nothing new to me, it's um, new to every person, especially first generation entrepreneurs, something that you need to convince, sell and then work on. Right. Uh, remember folks, the sales begins here. You're, you're selling whichever one you're looking at. And then comes the major part which is the external world. You call them prospect, a customer, an influencer, a door opener, a decision maker, whichever way you look at. You need to shout from the rooftops, scream your lungs out, make yourself heard, and you need to sell to every single person out here. 
they used to be and still continues to be a trend where they say, listen, I'm so good technically, I don't have any competition, uh, clients are just going to come beating down the door to me. That's the biggest myth that you can delude yourself into. The folks out there don't even know what your product is, how important your service is. Nobody's even going to come knocking your door. So the telephone out there, your mobile phone is not going to ring at all um, unless you go right ahead and tell it to them. And, and one last example here, and I'm going to relate to, to a story, guys. This is, of course, a fictional story when the Russian Premier comes to visit India. He has a meeting with the Indian Prime Minister uh, to sign a major accord. Uh, they sit down and the electricity comes off. Needless to say, the Russian Premier panics because um, over here, it, you really sweat buckets when you, uh, the electricity comes off. Uh, the secretary walks up and says, don't worry, sell it some jugar and the electricity will come back and lo and behold, five minutes later, uh, the electricity comes on. Fine. They're about to sign the accord, the ink pen stops working. A really irked Russian premier looked as, looks at the Indian prime minister. The same secretary comes up and says, don't worry, sir, in five minutes I'll do some jugar that will be ready. And something was done, the pen was ready and it was signed. With all this hoopla happening, the Indian Prime Minister said, listen, I understand all these issues happen, I'll drop you off at the airport. And on the way, uh, the car which was transporting just stalled and stopped right in the middle of the highway. And the same secretary was sitting in the front said, don't worry, sir, we'll do some jugar and um, um, it'll be okay. Five minutes, jugar was done, it was okay. And right at the airport, the Russian premier turns around and asks the Indian guy, our Prime Minister, uh, I'm really impressed with your jugar. Is it possible for you to give me uh, some of that? And the Indian Prime Minister looks around and said, listen, I'm extremely sorry, uh, Mr. Premier, but I'm running the whole country on jugar. Right? Now, what is the applicability of the jugar to this? Whatever you do, guys, you need to do some jugar to get noticed, to get out there, to shout, and make sure the world knows you are there. Not just one big bag approach, but something that is more continuous, ongoing, and we will come to the clap a tad later. Right. Ah, this is the tad later. This is the next section. What do you need to know? There are three M's. Again, the letter three. Again, three important M's. The market, mentor, or money. Now, when it comes to the market, for your business, yes, you have an idea, but have you evaluated what is the need versus what is the want? My need is to go from point A to point B but I want to do that in a Mercedes Benz or I want to do that in a vehicle, I want to do that in an AC bus. You need to figure out the needs and the wants. You need to figure out what is your market? What is the market that you're dealing with? And this is a question that I ask um, quite often to a whole bunch of people. Think about the biggest jeweler in your town. Now, who do you think is the biggest competitor for this jeweler? Top of mind answer that you will give me is a whole bunch of other journals in the uh, town or city that you are. Correct answer, but a wrong way of looking at it. In this day and age, the biggest competitor for this particular jeweler is not only another jeweler, but it's also this luxury store, call it Louis Vuitton or whatever is opening outside. It could be a foreign holiday that the wife demands. It could be an absolutely new vehicle that you're looking at. So the competition is not just the jewelry part, the competition is for mind share and wallet share. And people today can spend that kind of money, let's say five lakhs, on a foreign junket, on another vehicle, uh, on some other uh, luxury product. Right? Do you get the drift of what I'm talking about? Figure out what your market is. Your market isn't the jewelry market, your market is mind share or wallet share. Factor that part in. Also factor in which cycle is your business in. Are you in the startup cycle? Are you in the growth phase? Uh, what kind of finance or marketing that you'll be looking at? That's as far as the market is concerned, but at the end of the day you need to figure out what is your total available market size. And this is something that you will need to do on your own. Google will help you out, but you will need to use your brain out here. Which takes me to the second M, which is the mentor. Please take it very seriously, guys. A mentor is different from a coach. A mentor is not going to sit and do your work for you. A mentor is not going to do your business plan. But a mentor is somebody that you can bounce, bounce ideas with. A mentor is somebody that 
will share his or her mistakes and allow you to make newer ones and not repeating the older ones. There are various stages and various types of mentors. If you're in the startup stage, you need a startup mentor. You've been running your company for three to four years, you need to grow it to another level, you need a scale-up mentor. You need to go in for funding, you need a different side of mentor. And these are people who donate their time. Let's not talk financials here, but you need to have people who can advise you to take your company to a better level, to shape your business plan better. But please, let me correct it, guys. Mentors do not sit and do the work for you. They guide you. And the mentees uh, take care of it. Mentors rightly picked help uh, take your idea into a prototype stage, a prototype into a production stage, and then furthermore into sales. This leads me to the third most important M. Well, if you don't know which market you're in, what your positioning is, what your product or service is going to be, you will not be in a position to figure out how much money do you need. Initially, I would strongly recommend put your money, beg, borrow from your friends and family, put it in, get it to a prototype stage before you look out. And this is a major myth that I'm seeing in a whole bunch of startups. If I don't get the funding, I cannot do my business. Absolute balderdash. If you have belief in your product, idea, or service, go right ahead and slog your butt out. If it has merit, money will follow. But don't put it up saying that only if I get money, I can do that. Absolutely not. You can very well go ahead, figure out what is the bare minimum you need. And whatever money you decide, folks, 50% has to go towards marketing. That's conservative estimate. Don't put everything into your product development. Marketing is a major, that I would actually add it as a fourth hand, but that's part and parcel of whatever we're doing. And you need to know exactly what you're going to uh, from a money perspective, folks, I would strongly advise you to go take up a finance course. I'm not asking you to spend three months. There are one day, two day, three day workshops that are being organized for basically finance, for non-finance executives. Uh, I'm pretty certain it's there in most of the metros and top cities. Jump in. Even if you have to travel, understand the basics, folks, because a CEO, a startup entrepreneur needs to sell, needs to know numbers, needs to know what marketing is all about apart from the technical brilliance that we all bring to the table anyway. Research, research, research. Something, again, three words, but then uh, I'm not asking you to hire a market research company. I'm asking you to do the research yourself. What is my market? What is the variable size? What are the services? Who is my competitor? What kind of competition exists? Uh, when I'm targeting, what kind of a market share do I need to look at? What kind of mentors do I need? Where can I approach them? How do I talk to them? are all questions that answers are already available should you ask. And I'm not even talking Google alone. There are several other ways to research, attend conferences, attend uh, most of these lectures. You're already taking the first step by attending such a webinar. Continue to attend that because the more wider you invest in your own knowledge, the more wider is going to be your growth. The next point, again I'm on, on the second phase. Find a donor. I'm not asking, talking about a, a blood donor or the wiki donor types. I'm talking clearly about people who will be glad to donate time, glad to donate money, expertise, contacts, and yarn for you as an entrepreneur in your course. It is the same as finding a mentor, but a donor is much more than a mentor. Go right ahead, folks, and please do not preclude saying, oh, koi nahi milega, I won't find anybody. Throw these negative thoughts out of your head. When the pupil is ready, the master arrives. So you invest in the first part that I said about internal, I mean myself, the rest will automatically fall in place. And you will need to find donors for the various stages of your business. I will repeat, these are people who willingly donate time, gyan, know-how, expertise, contacts for you to enter, and in certain cases, money. They become angel funding uh, individuals in your case. But you will need to invest time to go find these donors. They will not invest time to find a particular mentee that they will look at. Once you've done that, keep your research arm going. And remember, from a startup entrepreneurship perspective, you will need to have multiple hacks. You will need to maintain your discipline to ensure that two hours today I'm spending in this, two hours today I'm spending in that. Please invest those, at least one part of the two hours in conducting your own research. Because as your business grows, 
your market is going to change and some of those steps will be repeated, some of those steps will need to factor in the local culture. Moving into the last part, which is the closing part of my talk, guys. Closing thoughts. You need to develop the mindset of an entrepreneur. Uh, if I remember right, there is an animal somewhere in Australia, New Zealand, the Asia Pacific issue called the honey badger. If you piss it off, if you irritate it, it doesn't matter where you run, how you run, it will hunt you down. That's from a negative point of view, but here, are you hungry about your idea? Are you hungry about entrepreneurship? Then be such a badger and keep nipping away until you win. Develop this mindset, develop a very, very, very thick skin, guys. Keep emotion out. When emotion sets in, reason, please. Uh, keep your sentiments and emotions out. Adopt a devil may care attitude. I'm not asking you to be arrogant, abrasive, and kick people away. But this is you we are talking about, a startup entrepreneur. This is you who should be concerned more about what you are doing and where you need to go. Again, remember, from a mindset of an entrepreneur perspective, you clearly need to know where you want to take. I'm not going to throw vision, vision, and such big statements out. It's your idea. You need to know where you want to take it one, two, three, four, five years from now, and you work towards it. The dreaming stage will ensure that the goal itself is big enough, but just beyond your achievable part. I'm going to quote some marathon allegories here. And when you train for marathon, and if you are slightly overweight like me, it's, it's a much longer training process. There's something called LSD, long, slow distance. If you are not used to it, you really take it slow, but not long distances. And in this case, folks, you are a startup entrepreneur today. It is a marathon that you're running, so don't try to achieve everything in the next couple of days. Motivation. Again, I have a running coach who clearly says, I'll give you a plan, I'll give you all the material and yarn. I will not give you motivation. Motivation is something that you need to figure out yourself. Setting the alarm at 4.30 in the morning and getting up is your job. Meeting you at 4.45 uh, by the beach is my coach's job. And it's the same with the startup entrepreneur. It's the same with any entrepreneur for that matter. Motivation has to be intrinsic, inherent, and self-motivated. That's something which is very important for me to talk during my closing thought. And please remember, folks, avoid the five-minute syndrome. Uh, it's it's five-minute syndrome is what everybody, all of you uh, over there on the call, have gone through. Which is you set the alarm for five, and it rings. Ah, I just snooze for five minutes, snooze for five minutes, and suddenly you find out it's seven o'clock. Applicable for the morning alarm. Applicable for anything that you do from an entrepreneurship perspective. Such a motivation today, guys, but make sure you don't fall prey to the five minute syndrome. Ah, who you know matters. If you are a brilliant techno geek sitting in your room and developed the most god awesome product, if the rest of the world doesn't know about it, how are you going to make any sales? Folks, I will put it through that let's say you want a date, you will need to make sure that you are there where there is uh, the likelihood of you finding a date is much higher. You know the market, you know the area, you know the timing, it's completely up to you. Have the same with entrepreneurship. Folks out there need to know who you are, what you do, how it will help, who will it help, and you can be absolutely open saying this is what I do, these are the kind of people that I would like to talk to and this is exactly how I'm going to benefit them. That is called seeding the market. All you entrepreneurs listening in, make sure you allocate evening, at least three or four evenings every week to such networking conferences, seminars, discussions, small or big, it doesn't matter. Whom you know matters. And go right ahead, you never know from which area you're going to get uh, a business in but by this time folks have the elevator pitch ready in 30 seconds flat you talk about what your business is and how it's going to help focus more on the how it is going to help part of it this is what I call the bikini pitch go right ahead it interests people they will make sure you get to meet the people you need to meet but be absolutely explicit be shameless CEOs, a startup entrepreneur must sell, sell, sell. Do not delegate, 
at the initial part to somebody else. Why is it important? Only if you are there in the field, you know what is the need, what is the want, who are they buying, how much are they buying it for, where are they buying it, who are they buying it from, what is the buying periodicity. All these questions are necessary for you for your marketing plan and business plan. And if the entrepreneur is relying on a completely different person to do it in the initial stages, you're missing a crucial piece of information that is critical for decision making. Something that you folks obviously need to be roll up your sleeves, jump into the field, whatever your field is, remember you define the market, and you need to go all out and get this thing done. Again, another three, prove your concept, prove your idea, sustain it. And this sustenance is something that is intrinsic, that you need to ensure that you devote enough time. And the idea has enough merit to sustain, and at that point you scale up, which could be from idea to prototype, prototype to production, and then thereafter. Um, either the franchising route or improve your market share. But please remember folks, you are running a marathon here, so don't try to have some quick fix solutions for whatever you're doing. This is a quote attributed to Nehru, I make it a point to tell at every talk that I give. If I am not for myself, who else is for me? If I am only for myself and myself alone, what am I for? Remember, as an entrepreneur, if you are not for yourself, None of us is going to come down and help you. What am I doing if I'm for myself alone? That's a very selfish part. So I pay it forward by conducting these webinars so that you can take something through, build huge companies. I, for one, am a startup specialist. I love being in startups. It gives me uh, the dopamine effect, which is a drug um, that the body produces that gives you a natural high. Um, you would need to get that and you would need to get that on a sustainable uh, venture. Internship folks, if especially for those who are cap on the wall, is entrepreneurship for me, uh, am I the right person, etc. Take up internships. Go to 2019.com or several other internship things. Intern with an entrepreneur and tell him I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to learn directly from you. Which is being practical, jump in, experience it, figure out if it's for you, if you are for it, and I really hope uh, it works both ways. But folks, entrepreneurship is a party, it's rocking out here. This is my 14th year as an entrepreneur, I'm loving every minute of it. I would gladly recommend copious doses for all you folks who are there, especially Cat on the Wall, treat this webinar as a kick in your butt, jump right in, Small scale, large scale, big, small, it does not matter. Um, it could be whatever you want to do, which is what I call with in, in this current generation, in my generation, dignity of labor, especially in the US, um, was not a big issue. It doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you work. And likewise, in entrepreneurship, it does not necessarily have to be an IT job or a KPO job. It doesn't matter what it is. I know at least a few millionaires who made it from waste management, from solar power, it does not matter, folks. Just jump right in. It is rocking out there. India today needs a lot more entrepreneurs. India today needs a lot more young entrepreneurs, and that's why they come in. And that's why when any had approached, I lovingly jumped in, because these are some of the aspects that are the foundation and building blocks of entrepreneurship. Go right ahead, folks. Rock on. I'm open for questions. Okay, thank you Praveen for that in very interesting presentation. Our first question is from Jagdish Mahali. He asks, what's the best way for financing? Jagdish, best way of financing is saving up your pocket money. We just had Diwali, go call it every elder that you have. They will give you money, save it up. Use that completely for your business. The next route is your parents. You will have to sell your concept, get it through. In the Indian culture, we have lots of mamas, chachas, approach them. I shamelessly did it. Um, in my second business, I asked my father-in-law for money. Of course, um, I don't mix it with dowry, guys. <laughs> it was an investment into the company. Um, but use your immediate circle. In my second business, we needed some money. I approached my friends. They gave me some. Uh, my requirement was slightly more, so they referred me through to a couple of the relatives who became my angel investors. Okay, uh, the next question is from Sai Krishna. 
uh, is it better to go for higher studies and learn new technology and look to start business in it or start a business with what is possible currently? Sai Krishna, I assume you are a student. If you are a student, it's the best time for you to become an entrepreneur. If you show that experience, I definitely bet that not only will you get admission, you will also get the necessary aid for you to continue. You can come back and become a much bigger, better entrepreneur. But start right now, if you, especially if you are still in school or college. Uh, if you've got two or three months, jump right in. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is from Dhawal. How much percentage of money needs to be given for marketing in a bootstrap venture? If you're going to do it yourself, you will invest a whole lot of your time, Dhawal. As you grow, please note you will need to invest a considerable amount in marketing. If you want me to talk about in percentage terms, assuming you're bringing 100% money to the table, I would say not less than 30% goes towards the entire marketing budget. In total, at least 10% has to go towards direct marketing. Okay, this next, next question is from Chandrasekhar Singh. He asks, I want to start my ERP business along with my current job. Is that okay to start? I'm already married. Is it wise for me to have a girlfriend at this point? And can we both of them at the same time, Chandrasekhar? Uh, it is uh, to, to respond to your question. It is fine to moonlight for a limited amount of time for you to prove the concept. But assuming the concept is proven, you should jump and focus all your energies into your initiative. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Surya. We all read and know about successful entrepreneurs, but I want to know what is the failure rate of startups because I feel that it is equally important to know that. What are the okay. usual pitfalls that new startups face? Um, phenomenal rate of failures, uh, especially in startups. Why, why bury it under? Read today's Economic Times back page. There, there is so much to learn from losers, much more than learning from winners. Uh, folks, all of you jump in just looking at the silver lining which is the Narayan Murthy's and, and Mark Zuckerberg's. There are a whole bunch of other entrepreneurs who might not have had that kind of success but as in my, in my opinion they definitely are success. Like in, in running there's a quote, um, especially for folks like me who are slow runners, um, it doesn't matter if you're fast or slow because I'm still beating 99% of the whole planet which is still sitting on the couch and sleeping. The same holds true for entrepreneurship. Only if you fail umpteen number of times, you will get through and get a success. I mean, each one is not a such intended to hit a six in the first ball here. So it needs that kind of a time. It needs that kind of maturity for you as an entrepreneur to hit it. Um, and I'm not talking about 10 years, 20 years. I'm talking about in months. So fail, fail early, fail fast, repeat the cycle. I'm pretty certain you will, when you look at me researching whatever you've done, you'll find out these things that you will iron out in the period of time. Okay, the next question is from Ankit Das Gupta. He asked, what is the opportunity for green technology based startup? Huge Ankit, huge, absolutely huge. I'm involved in a couple of those initiatives from an, in an advisory capacity and uh, the size, range and scope are fully wide. Um, thankfully one of them is a student entrepreneur who's just turned into a full-fledged entrepreneur um, and he's in um, uh, more specifically if you talk green energy, solar lamp for rural India kind of a business model. Very, very significant uh, and just as an aside, most of the Angels and VCs are now investing significantly into the green area. Okay, the next question is from Tanmay Chaudhary. My partner and I intend to start a marketing consultancy and we are looking for ways to differentiate ourselves. Could you suggest some ways and what are your suggestions? Tanmay, it's too blanket a statement. I would uh, recommend you pick a niche where the market is underserved. 
It could be uh, marketing consultancy for startups. I can tell you it is underserved. Um, pick up that niche and dig deeper. The advantage in such a niche, Tanmay, is as the startup grows, you grow along with it. Assuming you're going to do a, a cracking good job, uh, they will stick around with you when they are 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 crores. Pick a niche. Okay, the next question is from Yashaswini. He asks, which is better, two years of MBA versus spending two years doing internships? And I'm talking Yashaswini um, from personal experience. I was of the opinion, because I got into entrepreneurship much earlier, that MBAs are a waste of time. That was my thought a few years ago. Having gone into entrepreneurship and then um, done my EPGP at IM Indo, I'm a big, big, big proponent of getting work X and then doing your MBA and getting an entrepreneurial experience and then doing your MBA because the learning is significant and profound. So if you have an option of doing two years of internship, uh, I would say do three months of internship and the remaining months jump into some business uh, uh, that is of interest to you. And after that, go for your higher studies, your learning will be that much more, you can absorb that much more. I'm talking from personal experience here. Okay, uh, the next question is from Abdul. He says, how to know the legal aspects before starting up? Like what are important legal checklists that, that one should ensure before starting up? Right. Um, Abdul, please get a professional to help you out with that because there are lots of holes. Write down from what kind of entity are you going to form? Is it a proprietorship partnership, a limited liability partnership, a private limited or a public? Uh, leave the public part out, but the, all the others are uh, uh, in the legal framework for startups. You need to bring in a professional to help you out to do it the right way. Otherwise, when you are in the third or fourth year, you'll figure out you forgot something and you pay a heavy penalty. So use professionals, be it uh, not just for legal, also for accounting and finance. Okay, uh, the next question is from Abhinav Day. He says, first, should I start collecting people or work on development of the conceptual aim of the project? I didn't get the question right, work on the conceptual aim. No, I would say, put your pen to paper, bring your concept to life on paper. What I have personally realized and I request everybody to do, you can talk 20,000 things when I ask you to put it down on paper in a format that other people can understand. 99% of us suck. So my recommendation is put whatever your concept, whatever you want to do on paper in a format that is not just understood by you, uh, but by those around you. If it is that clear, then you can go ahead and ask people to join you in your venture because you'll be able to communicate properly at that time. Uh, the next question is from Prashant Chaudhary. He says, which is the best place to find a mentor for a prototype stage startup? Uh, prototype stage, I presume you're going to talk about uh, something on the hardware front. Go right ahead, there are associations like TAI, NASCOM, CII. Um, go ahead, join them. If you're a student, you get a student membership. Find out who is the best in your field and remember it's unlike the myth floating around nobody perceives uh, every startup as a competition. So there are quite a few people who will be there to help you out. Check out incubation centers. Incubation centers allow you, provide you the necessary resources as well as manpower to, to convert your idea into a prototype. Check out these incubation centers. I don't recollect top of mind but I'm sure IIT Chennai, VIT, Velour, uh, and a couple of more places up north also have incubation centers. Approach them, please. Okay, the next question is from Madhuri Goyal. She says uh, she wants to start a venture in rural and remote areas but don't have any idea uh, how exactly to start and in whom all and to all whom she, she could can, can contact. Does she need to contact NGOs or anybody else? Right. I will not start a business in Australia because I don't know how business is done in Australia. I will not set up a business in Assam because I do not know or understand the culture out there. So my advice to you if you want to get into rural, 
who live there for three months, find out how they live, how decisions are made. And I'm going to give you an example here. Procter & Gamble, which manufactures Gillette, was completely worried that their five blade system failed in rural India. Now this is a giant you're talking about. When they did their proper research, what we call immersion, when they went into the villages, they found out that one, villagers shave only once a month. Two, there is a common Nangi who comes and shaves it for them. Uh, three, they prefer to grow because they shave once a week. The hair grows out quite often. And four, their average cost for a shave is quite low. Now these are all inputs for decision making coming in from the field. That the four blade system, which is a success in urban India, is a colossal failure uh, from a price point, but also from a usage perspective. These are things that you will find out only when you go live in these areas. So if you are serious about a business involving rural India, break it down into state, break it down into district or whichever zone you are in, go spend some time traveling in this, understand that market, figure out the need and the want and then jump in. Okay, maybe the last question for the day, Praveen. Is internship in a small scale firm might not, not give a very nice profile when we want to do our MBA? What are your views on it? You do an internship to learn. Where do you have an opportunity to learn more about horizontals? If you are in a smaller scale company, you have the maximum possibility to put your fingers in marketing, finance, HR, uh, actual production than a Tata consultancy services which will, uh, of course you learn that as well, but you will pretty much be restricted to a particular division. So my recommendation for all you folks, do not look at doing an internship as a brand name that's going to get you a better job or uh, um, it's going to get you a better admission. It is your learning, your knowledge and how you position it that's going to get you all that. So go wherever you are confident, your learning capacity will be optimal. Where you will be in a position to learn as much more and experiment. And internships are not 9 to 5 folks, just give yourself into those internships. Small or big scale doesn't matter, where you learn and how much you can learn at that place matters. Okay, thank you Praveen for this interesting session. Uh, this was my the last... Right. Listen, my, my Twitter handle is at Praveen Shaker. My email ID is right on screen. Feel free to mail it across. I generally revert within 48 hours. So feel free to shoot any questions that you might have. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you to all our attendees for participating in the webinar. We are glad that the questions kept coming, but due to lack of time, we are unable to answer all. Please do send in your feedback and suggestions to us at eclub at nmgobal.org. Also, if you found the session interesting, feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available on our website by the end of this week. Also, NEN eClub is starting a series of workshop and panel discussions across India. Uh, on Saturday, we have in Chennai on raising money for your startup, Bangalore, managing and protecting your IPR, and Chennai, as I said, raising money for your startup, and Kolkata for nuts and bowls and legal aspects of starting up. So thank you once again and have a nice evening.